I'm from a town where the young never shut our eyes Pick your poison, you could ride with those other guys Life is more than just a dream when your team's strong We write anthems, this is more than just a theme song Rock bees on our winter wears Welcome to Benam, the home of the phenoms It's only one city that we lean on, we call that What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network Gaming Commentary here to bring you another edition of our Pokemon 5th Gen Battles. Now, before we get into it, I just want to mention two things quickly. First, I want you guys to leave any questions that you have regarding me here. Now, I'm starting up a new kind of Q&A, and I know I've already done two Q&As before that never really had answers. The reason why is because I would have so many questions, it would be difficult to answer them. And plus, on top of everything else, the Q&A videos never really got as many views as the Pokemon battles did, so I'm sure a lot of you didn't get your questions out. This is an opportunity for you to ask me any question you have, and I will answer it guaranteed. Use this opportunity as best as you can because this is going to be a great one for you. Either way, also, wait, yeah, so just leave your questions in the comment section below this video. I will answer them in a follow-up video. Um, I believe it'll be better to put the Q&As in the Pokemon battle, so this way it kind of like, you know, leads into it. You know, it kind of like is a whole Q&A thing. So ask me anything. Please comment. This is your chance. Comment and ask me anything. I'll answer 100%. All right. Now, the next thing I wanted to bring up is something that is not really as serious or as pertaining to the channel as that. But my little sister actually has a channel now, too, where she talks about political issues and such. And she just recently started posting up on it again. So if you guys want to see what my little sister looks like, you can go ahead and check out her channel. I'm going to have the annotations right there. And um, she does talk about some serious political issues and such. It is somewhat of a heavy topic, but at the same time, she's always been heavy. So, you know, it kind of suits her well. I think she has a future in that. So give her a visit. And, you know, try not to troll. I know it's inevitable for a troll to pop up on her videos, but do your best not to. Please. Oh God, she's gonna kill me. <laughs> Either way. Okay, no, no. Still, we are going to go into the Pokemon battle now. Guys, I have us today an incredible game. It's actually a silver ranked battle. I believe it's silver. Is it silver? I can't remember if it's silver or not. I believe it is silver though. And um, if I'm wrong, please forgive me, but I think it is silver. I'll know after I do the video editing. But um, today was a, it was an incredible game. I mean, goodness gracious, the competitive plays made here were astonishing to me. So, you know, well, maybe not astonishing, but they were definitely a higher cut above bronze, what I would consider a bronze ranked game. So, um, it was actually against somebody who goes by the name of, uh, let me see, it was Pokemon Master 533. And as I said, really intense game, really good competitive choices made. It was an astonishing battle, and it's using the same team that I had used beforehand. So, without further ado, let's go into the team preview right here. Now, as you guys can see here, this guy's team is quite threatening. Tyranitar in there, who can run a plethora of different sets. He has the Dragon Dance, he could have the Choice Band. Tyranitar is a really, really... He's one of the OU Pokemon that I can say he runs with a lot of stuff. He can have a lot of stuff on him, but thankfully he's usually not very fast in the beginning thanks to his low speed, so he is somewhat predictable to an extent, unless he's carrying a Choice Scarf, which would just be crazy in itself. But I've seen it done before, so you know what? I can't I can't hit on the Choice Scarf Tyranitar. It can be done if you have a competent enough trainer, that is. Oh man, I'm having trouble breathing again. Anyways, next off we have Sally the Mence. And of course it's going to be a big problem, once again, a real big threat if it's choice in some way. Usually they're Scarfed, well maybe not usually, but they manage to be Scarfed a lot of the time. With the Moxie as well, these guys are really, really dangerous. Whew. Next off he has his Ferrothorn in there, who is definitely going to be a setup. I've seen some people run Curse Ferrothorn or Choice Band Ferrothorn, so you know they are somewhat hard to deal with, but I'll figure it out. Next off we have Jellicent, who is most likely going to be a defensive variant, really tough to deal with. It's going to be kind of difficult, especially considering that I don't really seem to have too many thunder stabs on my field. Like, I don't really have anything that can hit Jellicent super effective as much. I mean, 
I'll have to probably try to see if I can hit it with a thunder from Juicy, but even then it is specially defensive so it probably won't kill it in one hit. Next off we have Buffalant, who of course is going to be the sap sipper of the team, able to absorb grass moves, so I'm thinking that against this Ferrothorn it's going to be most likely the best thing, or the best way to use this guy. And then finally we have Gyarados, my cut Atlantics. Now the thing is, this team is looking really really threatening here, I mean, wait a minute, did I just go off of his team preview into mine? Whatever the case may be, you guys get the point here. It's always difficult fighting teams like this, so let's see if I can pull a victory out of my ass. So, we are not going to waste any more time, and we are going to go into the battle right here. Right here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there. It started there. Okay. So, as I said, it's going to come by the name Pokemon Master um, 533. Now, starting off turn one, I make a horrible play. I'm thinking, okay, Tyranitar is in there, he's most likely going to set up some Stealth Rocks, let me go for my Coil Boost. I was so stupid because I shouldn't have gone for Juicy in the first place because it's at risk of getting hurt this early in the game. Juicy's not meant for early in the game, it's meant for late game. So I go for the Coil here, and even though I should have just withdrew here, for some reason I thought I could live another Stone Edge here. Now this isn't the result of me not knowing that I am like basically not exactly built to be that bulky. So at the end of the day, the Tyranitar is going to be able to take me out with the Stone Edge, and that is really going to suck because I basically lose Juicy so early in the game. It was a Pokemon that could have been used for so many things, but nope, losing. Anyways, I figure I want to hit this guy with a fighting move, so I go into my Buffalon to be able to use it for a superpower. But he goes into his Jolicent. Now the thing is, I had this battle a little while ago. You can tell by the background. I didn't figure out how to do that yet. And the thing is, is that Jolicent, while I am acknowledging that it is a great Pokemon, let me turn the volume down. It is a great Pokemon, but the thing is, is that like I didn't have anything to hit it with really because I just lost Juicy. Because I lost Juicy and my Thunder Attack, I'm going to really hate dealing with this Jellicent later on. Anyways, I go into my Cut Atlantic here because it's the best thing to wall whatever Jellicent wants to do since I am specially defensive and I managed to dodge the fucking Will-O-Wisp by an inch. But at this point now, I'm thinking, okay, he's most likely going to go into a Sparrowthorn here, so I should probably go for the Taunt and I predict correctly, I'm able to hit the Ferrothorn with the Taunt, stop him from setting up any Stealth Rocks. Now the thing is, in this game, I was a little bit more paranoid about Stealth Rocks than I usually am. I don't know why, I just was. So my main concern was keeping that Ferrothorn off the field because I do need extra, since he has the, um, the Sandstorm as well, it won't be great if I take extra damage from Stealth Rock and then the Sandstorm as well, which already negates my leftovers. In the way, I'm in there now, and I go into my defensive Uxie to be able to absorb what the Ferrothorn wants to do since he is taunted. I know that most likely he is going to go for that Power Whip, so I take that relatively well. He goes back into his Tyranitar now, and I see this is a great opportunity while he switched out with Ferrothorn to go for my Stealth Rocks. Now his Tyranitar is in there, and of course, usually this would be a bad scenario, but I am really, really bulky. I'm still not sure exactly what kind of Tyranitar set this is. Since he did only use Stone Edge twice, he could be choice in some way. I decided to just go for the Thunder Wave either way. This way I can live one turn of Pursuit damage at least. I'm probably not going to live two, especially if I withdraw, but hey, at least I live one. The main problem here now is the fact that it is really fucking hot in this room. <laughs> like, oh man. But yeah, that's probably why it's a little hard for me to breathe, that asthma that runs in my family. But anyways, I go back into my Buffalon now, and I'm figuring that more than likely, I'm going to be able to threaten this guy out with a superpower. Now, he could have just gone into his um, Jellison again. So instead of going for the superpower, I decided to just go for the Earthquake. The reason why is simply because I knew that most likely he was not going to stay in there with Tyranitar, because his Tyranitar... I mean, he's still at full health, and it seems like he's choice in some way. He may be choice bandit. So, but then again, if he was choice bandit, he would have probably done a lot more damage to Juicy. But whatever the case may be, now he's in there with his Jellicent, and I don't have Wild Charge. I had this battle a little while ago, actually, and it's after this battle that I put Wild Charge on Buffalant because it's much better than Megahorn because Megahorn is redundant with my Escavalier, who already has Megahorn, and I put Toxic on Escavalier instead of Sword Dance because that, you're going to see not having Toxic on Escavalier hurts me badly later on because this Jellicent is pretty much the crooks of all my problems right now. I am able to go in there with my Gyarados. I'm figuring with enough damage done to this guy, I can most likely whittle him down and then hit him really quickly. The problem with this is that I kind of don't have any Thunder moves, so I can't worry if something hits him right away. But anyways, I go into my Nidoqueen Queen here. I know that for a fact he will not go for a Scald because he most likely he wants to cripple my Gyarados. So I see this as a great turn to go into Nidoqueen, Queen who doesn't really mind the burn from the Will-O-Wisp. And now I threaten him out with a Thunder move. I should have predicted this, but I thought that he would predict that I'm predicting that so he would just not go for a safe play into the Thunderous and would have maybe predicted me to go for the Ice Beam there. But he makes the safe play, even though I could have just gone for the Ice Beam. I was, I had my finger on Ice Beam, and I was saying, you know, I should just go for the Ice Beam. But if I went for the Ice Beam and his 
Jellison stayed in, I would have lost my Nidal Queen, and that would have been a massive blow for the team. Even if he went back into his Thunderous, I could still go into my Escavalier right here and take the Hidden Power, no problem. That's why I didn't go for Ice Beam. Not that I didn't see his Thunderous coming. I just didn't want to lose Nidoqueen over an over prediction because that would have been a lot uglier than just having his Thunderous switch out after he gets hit, after he hits my Scavalier. Now here's the thing, I go for the Sword Dance on the Switch knowing that more than likely he is choice in some way so I'm just like okay whatever just go for the Sword Dance. But his Jellicent's in there and with Mega Horn and Iron Head I can't really do much to this guy so I'm like shit. This is where I really would have liked Toxic, because instead of that, instead of that Sword Dance, I could have toxic him. That would have been better against the Thunderous. That would have been better against the Jellicent, but no. So it's after this game that I had like maybe two weeks ago that I put Toxic on my Escavalier simply because it'll have much better utility on this guy. So you guys are going to see that now this Jellicent, I did not think that he would pack a recover for some reason. I didn't see his fourth move, but I did not think he would have recover, and sure enough, he has recover. So I'm like shit. I kind of forgot that that was standard on Jellicent, you know, so I should have stayed in there and gone for the Iron Head or the Mega Horn, but I was predicting that he was switching to his Ferrothorn to get up his rocks, that's why I go into my Cut Atlantic. This guy is predicting the shit out of me, you know, it's like, damn, you son of a, like, I, ugh. Either way, I go for the taunt here, expecting Ferrothorn to come in because for some reason I was really paranoid about Stealth Rocks, when in reality they're not exactly that detrimental to my team, all they really heard is Cut Atlantic. Even though it would have been bad to have those with the Sandstorm, but I could manage, especially considering that a Scavalier does resist Sandstorm. Anyway, so now you guys are going to see he finally does get the burn off on me after using a Scald, and I'm like, shit, man, now uh, he's probably going to go into Ferrothorn. So what I decided to do here is simply stay in there with Gutterrados and go for the Thunder Wave. Now, I could have probably fucked up here, and he could have gone into his Thunderous, but then again, I don't think he would have done something like that because he could have risked taking a Waterfall or an Aqua Tail since he doesn't exactly know what kind of set I am. He just knows I have Taunt. He doesn't know if I am Dragon Dance or not. But someone showing him my Thunder Wave, he still most likely now thinks that I'm not doing Dragon Dance anymore. So anyways, he goes into a Salamence now, seeing this as a safe opportunity since I am burned. And I'm like, okay, go for the Taunt, stop the Ferrothorn from doing rocks. But he predicts that really well, of course, going into a Salamence since he's not really phased by the Taunt unless he's Dragon Dance or something. So I'm like, okay, the best way I can take out this Salamence is by maybe going there with my Escavalier or maybe going there with my um, Uxie, hitting him with a Thunder Wave, slowing him down and making him easy to kill for my Nidoqueen. For some reason, I thought that he didn't pack Fire Blast either. It's, this is funny because I learned this lesson over and over again. Like, 4th Gen Salamence carries Fire Blast. He hits my Escavalier right in the damn... What, what is that thing on his head? Either way, it really sucks. He predicted me so well there. I cannot lie, brother. You got that one. That was a good prediction. I never even thought twice. Just go in there, Guinevere. Absorb the outrage. Nah, he Fire Blasted the shit out of me. So, you know... Good stuff there. Either way now, I'm saying, okay, this is when I can encompass that strategy. I'm gonna go into my Uxie, threaten him out with a Thunder Wave or something like that, and then go into my Soul Glow. I was hoping that maybe he would go for his Ferrothorn again to resist the Thunder Wave, but then again, why would he really be threatened by Uxie? Even though I am physically defensive, and Uxie is just in general a defensive behemoth. So I made a really dumb play there going into my Buffalo. I shouldn't have done that. I was trying to switch into Uxie, scare him out, because I'm defensively bulky and I have Thunder Wave, maybe make him go into his Ferrothorn and then go into my Buffalo to be able to hit him with the superpower. But that doesn't work out too well. So at this point now, I go into my Gyarados to hit him with the Intimidate, slow down his attacking power so I can somewhat live an outrage from this guy when I go into my Uxie. So now I think he's basically at neutral, neutral attacking power and plus he had the Lumberry so he can just fire off another outrage with no problem. He's at neutral attacking power now though, with that outrage after the Intimidate from my Gyarados. So I know I can live this outrage and then proceed to go for a Thunder Wave. And once he's slowed down, this means that my Nidoqueen can come in after Uxie is KO'd, hit this guy with an Ice Beam and totally wipe him out. Of course it's going to involve me losing my defensive behemoth, but at this point, thanks to the Sandstorm, there's no real way I can recover HP anyways. So I decide this is going to be the... Uxie, you're going down, but let me not go down without using Heal Bell first so I can heal the burn on Virgo and give it some more survivability. Therefore, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. Even though I have lost a lot of Pokemon, he still has a lot of his Pokemon left and that land and that Thunderous, which is definitely going to be a problem since I lost my Escavalier in such a foolish way. I decide, just go in there, Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen is actually my last Pokemon at this point. Go in there with Virgo. I'm going to hit the Salamence with the Ice Beam. So you know what? Even though a lot of Pokemon were sacrificed due to my own stupidity and the way I handled this battle, he still loses his Salamence. So I feel good about that. Goes into his Tyranitar now. And of course, I'm like, okay, 
I do not want to lose my Nidal Queen so fast. Let me go into my Soul Glow here to be able to absorb the hit because also I know that with the Sandstorm up, and since Tyranitar is a rock type, the Earth Power will not kill him. It just will not. I was hoping that maybe he would switch out, maybe he was trying to scare me out, but whatever the case may be, that was really impractical to hope upon. His Tyranitar is going to easily break a hole through my Buffalant. Um, and now I am like, okay, um, go in there, Virgo. Hit him with the Ice Beam because I was predicting his um, Thunderous to come in. But since he didn't switch out, of course he's going to be in there with Superpower. I'm thinking that most likely this guy is choice now. I'm going to basically be able to stay in there and go for an Earth Power on this secondary turn, which should be able to take the guy out since Tyranitar, even though he does have really good uh, special defense with the Sandstorm, his base special defense isn't all that great. He goes into his Ferrothorn now, absorbing the Earth Power, and you know, I'm not really like bothered by that because I know the Earth Power coupled along with the Flamethrower will easily be able to take this guy out. I think the Flamethrower by itself will be able to take this guy out. So that's Virgo working. His Thunderous is, no, 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 his, um, his Salamence is down, his Ferrothorn is down, so you know what, Virgo took down two Pokemon, really, really good shit, and you know, even though his Thunderous is going to come through at this point, I'm still thinking, hey, maybe I can live a Hidden Power of Ice if this guy's Choice Scarf, but if he's Choice Specs, it's a wrap, but then again, I don't have the best special defense anyways, I am defensively bulky, not specially defensive, so I'm going to lose my Virgo, and that, my friends, is going to be a good game. It kind of sucks that things happen that way, but you know what, at the end of the day here, this, that was a really great game. That was a silver game. Reason why? My opponent was on point. This guy was predicting the shit out of me. Like, there were some foolish moves that I made there that I could have probably estimated better, but it doesn't change the fact that this guy was one step ahead of me for the most, for the most of this battle. Props to you, Pokemon Master 533. Good game, good plays. The reason why this game is silver is because you played like a boss. And because of that, this game is silver. I, I can't believe I got outplayed so well there. But that was really impressive to see. That's the first time that in a long time I've been totally d destroyed with that team. So you know what? Really impressive stuff there. Either way, I want to thank you guys once again for tuning into this section of the Etika World Network Gaming Commentary. Have any questions, comments, or concerns? This is a Q&A video, so leave them below. Either way, guys, I ain't going to hold up no more of your time. And remember, ask those questions. A lot of you guys, look, if you're one of those 800 plus people that doesn't comment on my videos, you just watch it, enjoy it, and leave, leave your questions. I want to I want you to get your questions, man. Leave them shits. Either way, I'll talk to you guys later on. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn Good one.